We ask, oh God, that you would just be in our midst, shower down upon us, send blessings from on high. We need a touch from you, and we're looking forward to meeting you today in worship. Bless the pastor as he shall stand. Bless every prayer that is offered, every scripture that is read, that all that we do bring glory to your name. We ask you now in Jesus' name, and God's people say together, amen. 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 You may be seated. Our choir is coming down to continue us in worship.
early remarks, and then the choir will come with a, a song of preparation. Pass the button. God bless all of you. Give me Lord's house again today. God is in all, all of the time. I bring you greetings from the continent of Africa, and they want me to make sure that they tell you that they are appreciative for all of your foreign mission donations and everything that you have contributed to make the trip a success. So Amen. RCG is highly recognized in Kenya and across the continent. There is, we had Kenya TV available, so the entire graduation is going across the continent. Amen. And we graduated over 410 students. While there were 210 in the auditorium, the other ones were in distant country like Gambia, Ethiopia, Nigeria, Algeria. It was too far of a distance for them to come, but they did enjoy it on the um, on the TV app that we had available. All that's going to be made available to you for you can sit and look at it and review it. Amen. But I thank God what the Lord is doing. Since we've had our accreditation and our international recognition and accreditation, our school is growing very, very, very fast. And finally, as we said before, there is a law in Africa, particularly in Uganda and Kenya, that says all pastors must have theological education and or training. That's the law. And since our school offers scholarships to all pastors and to all students, we're getting a lot of recognition Amen. and a lot Amen. of enrollment. So we thank you all so very much. Even though I was glad to go, I was glad twice. Glad to go, but glad to be back home. <laughs> So thank you once again for all that you do and the Lord is faithful. We'll have some pictures available this weekend and of course on. But we don't want to take away from the next Sunday, but we'll make all that available to you. It's important for the church to know what we are doing in the name of our church. And you need to know that I appreciate it and all those appreciate it as well. We have two components of our ministry. There is a humanitarian side where we fed about three small villages wow. and orphanages. So that's where we have the humanitarian side. And then of course we just talked about the academic side. Anyway, thank you so very much and I appreciate it. I'm going to thank Lady Sherry because she has been available. She goes with us all the time, and I just want to say publicly, I appreciate it. <laughs> just like me, where you go, I go. <laughs> Your people will be my people. <laughs> so we thank God for her. Of course, we're going to come now and continue this further with worship, and following that, we're coming certainly with our message for today.
marries an Assyrian, you get the Samaritans. So the Jews looked at Samaritans as half-breeds. They're not authentic Jews, so the Jews had no relationship with them. But Jesus says, I must need to go through Samaria. Jesus knew that the Jewish religions, the religious leaders, would not go to Samaria because of what we just said. Amen. So Jesus said, look, I've come to save everybody. Yes, sir. So I've got to go where the religious leaders will not go. All right. That's a sermon in itself. Amen. Many Amen. times we get so comfortable in who we worship with and where we go to worship that the persons that need the gospel, sometimes they don't even get the gospel because we as believers are comfortable where we are and we need those persons to fend for themselves. But what Jesus says, I must needs go through Samaria. Yes. That was the long way around to get to Jerusalem. I'm gonna just cut across the field. But because when Jesus got to where the woman was, because the end of the story is, and I'll go back to the text, because Jesus told her everything about her, she ran into town and told all the other Samaritans that, hey, there's a man out there that told me all about Jesus and he's giving me everlasting water and everlasting life. So the footnote is, even on Father's Day, it was a woman that carried the gospel back to the Samaritans and the Samaritans came out to see Jesus and that's how the gospel got to Samaria. All right, All right. amen, amen. So let me back up the story. So in John chapter four, verse 11, the woman said, and of course Jesus is thirsty and he wants water, he wants water. And the woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with. So I want to talk a topic today on that one verse. Nothing to draw with. Question mark. Do we have something to draw with? So this woman at the well, and if you ever notice, she doesn't have a name. Because biblical times, women didn't have a call by name, the woman at the well, the woman with the issue of blood, the woman that touched the hem of his garment. Women were just women, and they had no identity unless they were significant. And the ones that were significant, then we hear their name. So this woman at the well could be any unbeliever that finds him or herself in a situation where they encounter Jesus and Jesus speaks to them without putting them down but yet challenging their lifestyle. Amen. So she said, you have nothing to draw with. In other words, Jesus asked her for some water. Typically, when you ask for water, you need a receptacle, a bucket, a pail, a jar, or something to put the water in. So she says, and the first point is, she underestimated his reach because she said, you have nothing to draw because she did not understand his reach. There's nothing too deep that's out of the reach of Christ. God specializes in retrieving things out of deep pits. He specializes because Psalm 40 and 2 says, He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and he set my foot upon a rock. So when she says the well is deep, what she really is, she's underestimating the power of Jesus right. to reach into places 
that we can't reach ourselves. So she underestimated his reach. Number two, she misunderstood his relevance. Look at verse 12. She says, are you greater than our father, Jacob? First of all, you have nothing to get your water because the water is deep. She misunderstood that he's able, no matter what the deep or the depth is, Jesus can reach it. But then she underestimated what I call his relevance. She says, are you greater than Jacob, our father? And then Jesus begins, if only she knew, are you greater than Jacob? And, 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 and NIV says, are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself and did so all his sons and livestock? She's saying, are you greater than the ones before you? And of course, Jesus, the word speaks in Matthew 12, 42. It says, a greater than Solomon is here. Luke eleven thirty two. it goes on to say that a greater than Jonah is here. So while she's trying to compare Jesus, at this time she doesn't know who he is, she's trying to compare him with the pillars of the past. Are you greater than person that built this well? You already don't have nothing to put the water in because it's deep. And then verse 12 says, are you greater than those? And what Jesus is trying to say to her, I am greater than all of those you mentioned. She also underestimated his resources. Right. And it says, wait a second, you have nothing to get your water, she still doesn't see it. So when it comes to drawing, the Lord has no problem with drawing. Because the question was, you have nothing to draw. You are incapable of getting this water because you don't have anything to draw out of. She underestimated who he was and his ability to draw not so much the water but listen to this. She came to draw water. He came to draw a woman. Right. She right. came right. to draw a temporary fulfillment. He came to draw eternal fulfillment. Right. She came to quench a natural thirst. He came to quench a spiritual thirst. He came to a well provided by man. He brought her a well provided by God. Yes, she thought he needed her help to get water. God doesn't need help. He knew she needed his help to get water. Yes. So when you look at this, she realizes that even it speaks to us, when we come together, God himself wants us to worship him. But we should never think that our praise is predicated on us. Our praise is predicated on the Spirit of God that is on the inside. Yes. And when we come to the Lord's house, we come for the Lord to water our thirsty souls. Amen. We yeah. come to Amen. the workhouse of God yes. to have him quench our deserts of fear. Yes. We come to the house of God to get freshing water of our souls so that when we leave, we can get just a glass of water. Yeah. We came because our thirsty soul needed refreshing and God is able to do that. When you come to church for one thing, God will meet you with the substance that will sustain you more than you ever thought you could. She came looking for water. She came with a pot to get water, but when she left, she was the pot because God put water in her that she didn't know was available. So we come to the house of God. God will fill us with the water that we need. So you can't come with a glass bottle and expect God to fill it with natural water. But as we present our bodies a living sacrifice unto God, he will fill us over and over with the refreshing water that will give us what
what we need through the death of the next week. He'll give us what we need to get to the barren places in life. He'll give us what we need to sustain the dry areas of our life. Amen. So we focus on verse 11. Sarah now has nothing to draw with. She had no idea how wrong she was. Jesus placed an incredible emphasis on the need for us to be saved. But first, we must be drawn. Right. Amen. Amen. We must be Drawn. John 6 44. No man comes to me except, except the Father which has sent him draw him. In other words, God draws us. Because if left to ourselves, we don't want a God. We don't want salvation. But God Himself, as it says in 644, that God draws us. We can't even get saved if we are not drawn. What do you mean you have nothing to draw with, woman? Who do you think Jesus is? He came to seek and to save that which was lost. Woman, what do you mean you have nothing to draw with? Make no mistake. God has plenty of things to draw with. Make no mistake. Jesus was drawing this woman at the well by reminding her of her sinful life. It was this revelation that caused her to drop the water pot and go to the city. It was the revelation that caused her to say, hey y'all, come see a man. Because when God does something on the inside, you got to go and tell somebody that I was this way, but when I met the Savior, I'm leaving a different way. She says, I know that the Samaritans don't like the Jews, but I'm going to forget the ethnicity and the tribal conflict. All I know is he told me everything about me, and he gave me that living water that never shall die. And we need to recognize, don't be afraid to tell somebody what the Lord has done in your life. Too many times as believers, the Lord has delivered us and we don't say nothing at all. God has worked it out and we're not even giving him the praise. God delivered us even at this altar and then we act as if we deserve it and we never come back to tell God thanks. I want to tell all of us today, because of what we have, it's not because we're so good, but it's by the grace of God. And if God can deliver us and set us free, then we ought to be able to go tell somebody, you don't know like I know. You don't know where I was. You don't know how low I was. But Jesus picked me up from a muck in my clay. And even though I don't like your affiliation, I don't go along with your religion, but let me tell you what the Lord's done for me. He picked me up. He turned me around. He set my feet on solid ground. He blessed my family, blessed my children. You don't know like I know. You don't want to shout, but excuse me while I shout. You don't want to say, well, get out of my way. The Lord has been too good to me. And I don't know about you, but if I had I could not thank God enough for all that He's done for me. That's why sometimes you ought to run, even if you're right in your mind. Sometimes you want to shout, even if you're shouting in your mind. Because the Lord has done something, and I don't care who knows about it. Because when I was going through, you were not there. When I was sick, you were not there. When I was having problems, you were not there. Now the Lord has delivered me. Beep, beep. 
That's why I'll shout in the face of whoever. Because God has been good to me. I don't know about you, but he woke me up, turned me around, set my feet on solid ground. Excuse me, I got to shout a while. Excuse me, I got to say hallelujah. Excuse me while I dance for the Lord. Because he has been too good. The woman said, I know you all don't want the Jews, but let me tell you something. He set me free from myself. And she ran back to the village. Yes. Jesus. Don't ever be afraid to stand up and tell somebody what the Lord has done. There's somebody waiting for your witness. There's somebody waiting for your testimony. There's somebody waiting for encouragement. If the Lord has done something, we sing a song, you ought to run and tell somebody. Be not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But it's the power of God unto salvation. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes you well up in the soul. I just can't keep it to myself. I can't keep it to myself. If you think about it, you should be able to keep it to yourself. I never tell people how to react. But the Lord's been good. Sometimes you ought to just shout. Well, your knees hurt. You can't shout. Maybe you can't run. But you sit there and you begin to think about what the Lord has done. You can walk from side to side. You can bend your knee. You can wave your hand. You can clap your hand. You don't have to do like everybody else does. But if the Lord has delivered you, somebody ought to know you didn't deliver me. It was Christ Jesus. So, Lord, I'm concerned. Get out of my way. I will praise Him. I will give Him all of the glory. You don't like my praise? That's all right. My praise is not unto you, but it's unto God. It's God that delivered me. Because of the story of the Christ. He draws us. We think about Calvary. Think about his death and resurrection. The story of Christ. When we look and see how he came through 40 and two generations. When we look at the story of Christ. How we were jacked up, messed up. But yet because of the blood of Christ. He draws us because of the story of the resurrection. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame. See, that's the story. That's the story. But I love that old cross. Oh, Lord Jesus. So I cherish. He draws us. So I cherish. The old. Draw 
us. When I think about how we died, he draws us. When I think about the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross, he draws us. When I look at him who knew no sin, became sin for me, he draws us. When I look around us, he could have left me where I was, but he drew us in. And because he drew us in, we're not the same as we used to be. We ought to let God draw us in by the resurrection story. Number two, he draws us in by his spirit. Ooh, Lord. He draws us in. I call it draws us in by conviction. Nobody can come except the Father draws us. And we remember what we've been through. God draws us in by his Holy Spirit. Have you been in the early days, and I'll just be quick, how you were wrestling, trying to wonder if you're going to accept Christ? Should I or should I not? Yeah. It's God's spirit that draws us. Right, yeah. It's God's spirit. Sometimes I can remember personally when God was calling me and calling my life. I didn't want to do it. I did not want. But I could not run. Because God was drawing me in by his spirit. And God is talking to somebody else today. Never listen to people. The voice that's in you, the burden that you have, it's the Holy Spirit that draws us in. Yes, sir. It's called conviction. Your burden, you should, you want to. And you look at people and situations that challenge you. It's God that's speaking. His spirit will draw us in. Third, he draws us with soul winning. The one verse we have when Jesus was trying to look for his disciples, he drew them and we, with the Spirit of God, we can become soul winners. And we can draw other people in. Not by us, but by the story of Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, by the fact that Jesus knows. And we can witness to someone else by soul winning. Jesus told them in Mark, come, I'll make you fishers of men. And straightway, they forsook their nets and followed. God has given all of us a tremendous responsibility to draw sinners in. We put a footnote here because we can't draw people by fussing. Come on, dog. Say so. We can't draw people by condemning them. We can't draw people to Christ by thinking we're better than someone else. All right. All right. We can't draw people by putting them down. We can't draw people to Christ without understanding the various religions. You can't put down a Buddha if you never know why they worship. We can't put down Muslims unless we understand why they worship. Because the Bible does says, he that with his souls is wise. Which means we have to have wisdom to understand their point of view yes. before we can introduce Christ and bring them into the unification of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he draws people by yes. soul winners. Yes. Years and years ago, in the old church, I used to say this, and I believe it's going to happen. I was telling that church, y'all, one day, you all will come in five minutes late, and the church is going to be full of homeless people, wayward people, people that don't know Christ, 
Because when God begins to shake up and when God begins to bring people in, yes. he's going to bring people in that don't look like us, right. that don't smell like That's us, right. that don't talk That's like right. us. And sometimes we don't do soul winning because we would be afraid if someone came in with an odor of the street. We would move our seat or if they come in, we would feel insecure because we don't know their background. But I challenge you today, those are the ones that we want to reach for Christ because it's Christ that will clean you up. It's Christ that will get them off of the drugs and the Amen. chemical dependency. Amen. It's Christ yeah. that will straighten up their lives. Yeah. Our purpose is to win souls for Christ. That they may know this Christ Jesus. And the church must be the catalyst to be an act as soul winners. Starting right with our family. We want to train our children what the Bible says. We want to train our family what Jesus requires. And we win them by soul winners. Yes, sir. In 2 Corinthians 5, 18, And all things are of God, who have reconciled us by Jesus Christ, Amen. you see, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Yes, yes. It's a ministry to, wit that God, to witness that God was in Christ Reconciling the world unto himself. Amen. Amen. So we have an obligation. God has done his part, and we need to do ours. And lastly, number four, he draws us with sympathy. Sympathy means you see a situation, and sympathy means you act on what it is. A person is going through. Sympathy says, I'm going to do something to help you. I'm not going to just talk about it. I'm going to do something to help you. So long before the woman ever got to the well, God looked ahead in time and saw that she needed a Savior. Long before you and I were born, yeah. God yeah. knew that somewhere along the line, yes. we would need salvation. While we didn't love him, didn't think about it, played around in church, God had sympathy. And he didn't charge us for what we did, but he reached out to us and said, I can use you. You got a place in the kingdom. And Jesus says in verse 4, this woman at the well had the most horrible character life. But Jesus says in verse 4, I've got to go through Samaria because somebody needs some sympathy. Somebody needs some running water. Somebody needs forgiving. And he saw her as an outcast. She was unwanted, unloved. And God had compassion on her. You can read it. She had had five husbands. She was living with a man, but she had never been loved by anyone like she was loved by Christ. And we're not talking about an infatuation love. She felt a bond. She felt that Jesus loved her for her soul, loved her for who she is, not her lifestyle. Somebody needs to hear that. God is loving you, not because of your character, not because of your past. God has sympathy on us because we are a soul. He wants us to come into the family of God. So he draws us with sympathy. He says, come unto me, all ye that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So Jesus looked at this woman and he said, this woman needs salvation. He looked at me and said, Butler needs salvation. Right. He's looking right. at church members because yeah. you can be in church and really don't know Christ. Right. You can be All born right. in church yeah. and never be born again. Yeah. And because we do the work of Christ, that don't mean we are in Christ. But what God does, he no, said, I know you're in church, free. but do you, are you in with me? And he toils with us. He has sympathy with us. We play around in church. We disregard his word. Present company excluded. We don't pay attention. The preacher screams too loud. The preacher talks too long. I don't have time. 
I've got to go to dinner. I've got to make market. I've got to wash the car. I've got to cut the grass. But you know what? God hears all of that, but yet he doesn't give up on us. He said, even though you got your agenda, I got mine too. And I'm so glad that he doesn't stop us from serving him in spite of the fact we're not trying to serve him. John 4, 19, we, we love him because he first loved us. You know who said hate the sinner? Hate the sin and not the sin? It was Mahatma Gandhi. Mm. He said, hate the sin, not the sin. All right. Think about See, it. that's what God does. Right. He doesn't look at our mess. Right. And many persons don't get right with God. We don't allow him to draw us because we focus on what we've done. And right. Satan will always make us feel you're not worthy. Don't even go there. Just be happy, just coming in. Yeah. Sit down, don't have a praise, don't have a joy, but the Lord is in sympathy on us. And he came and he did something about it. God can draw us. Yes, he can. God can draw us. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He can draw us, men. She said you have nothing to draw with. And Jesus, yes, I do. I got the cross. I got Calvary. I got the resurrection. I got witness of my disciple. I got healing. I got hurt. Don't tell me I don't have nothing to draw with. Don't let anybody tell you you have nothing to draw with. Look at what you've already done. You can draw people to Christ by your testimony. You can draw people to Christ by your walk. You can draw people to Christ by you telling them how good God has been. Maybe some of the destruction in our lives is because maybe God is trying to draw us closer to him. Maybe our family, our finance, and our friendship are always on shaky ground, always up and down. Maybe God is trying to draw you and me closer to him. Because it's in these issues of problems and circumstances when we really call on God. God wants to draw us closer. Sometimes you can't seem to get ahead. Take one step forward, fall two steps back. Maybe God is trying to draw us closer to him. Life is a struggle. Cannot make ends meet. My father used to say, Son, make ends meet is when you can pay all the bills and you have enough money. But dad says, son, watch it. When you think you have the ends met, somebody will move the ends. All right. Amen. Amen. You got enough here. You plan for it. But then all of a sudden, something happens. Maybe God is trying to get us closer to him. One step back after another. Come on, church, listen. Maybe one step back after another. God is trying to draw us closer to him. You and I, we got to stop resisting the pull of God. We got to stop resisting the tugging on our hearts. We got to stop not listening. We got to stop saying it's all about me. The more we resist, he lets us run and run until we're all worn out. There's no sense in being 80 and 90 years old and coming to Christ. You don't have a long life anymore. The Bible said, seek you the Lord in the days of your youth. When you have energy, when you have time. This is my last illustration. When a fisherman goes fishing, and he's got the right bait because not all bait can catch all fish. But when the fish finally gets on the hook, you know what the fish does? The fish tries to get off of the hook. And the fisherman is trying to draw the fish in, but the fish will not come. It keeps running. God is trying to draw us in, but we do not want. We fight against the line that's trying to draw us in. But what the fisherman does, he gives the fish slack. 
that means he releases the catch of the spinner and let the fish run and run and run. You ever been fishing and you couldn't bring them in? You say, okay, I'm going to let you run. The fish will go 50 yards, 100 yards fighting against the pool. But sooner or later, the fish is tired of running. And when the fish is tired of running, then the fisherman can bring them in with me. God is saying, I'm trying to bring you in. You keep resisting. You keep running. I'm going to give you some slack. I'm going to let you run and do all the things that you want to do. But when you get tired of running, when you get tired of doing your own thing, when you get tired of thinking where you are is better than where I want you to be, God will bend to you. Then you're all tired, you're all weary, then God says, come unto me. Oh, you got to labor. Then when we are tired of running, God begins to draw us in. How does he draw us in? He draws us in with forgiveness. He draws us in with restoration. He draws us in with peace of mind. He draws us in with great love. He draws us in. We've been running all the time trying to resist God. But when he finally gets us into the boat, we have a new life. We have a new hope. We have new joy. We have a new friend. Because God didn't give up on us. He drew us in when we were ripping it one time. Thanks be to God that God did not give up on me. He did not give up on you. I stand today because God's love drew me in. His goodness drew me in. His long suffering drew me in. And now I'm so glad that I can tell the world. I don't know about you, but I can tell somebody. I'm not the same like I used to be. And this may be in Christ. He's a new creature. Old things have passed away. And new things I've seen on the horizon. Don't be afraid to tell God. He's already drawn you in. Here I am, Lord. If you need somebody, you be for your glory. You be for your word. Because I want to be used by you. I have a testimony that the world can't say. I've got a song that the world can't say. I've got a victory that the world can't say. so glad because the Lord had peace and love and joy. Maybe today on Father's Day draw me nearer. Draw me nearer to the place even on Father's Day man, consider what Jesus did. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Consider what he did. He didn't put the woman down, he just told her. He had some water, she didn't have no put it in, but he began to witness to her. And that's our job, is to witness to somebody so that they can be drawn into Christ. Amen. I can look around and we can see the handiwork of God. Yes, sir. As believers, we should look around. Don't do it now. Has anybody ever been led to Christ by you. Thank you Bob. Thank Have you ever shared the word of God? Right. Not come to the church. All right. All right. I mean right. somebody yeah. came to you broken yeah. like the woman at the well. Yeah. Somebody came to a believer needing some help. Yes. And you were not able to give them what they need. God wants to draw us closer yes. so that when that time comes, we don't have to say, meet me at 56 feet. Right. We can say, let me tell you what yes. the Lord has done. Yes. Romans yes. says, we confess yes. your sin. <laughs> yeah, we can be risen with Christ. Yes. Seek those things which are above. You should be able to witness that tell them salvation is easy as ABC. As a believer, we should know the plan of salvation. Yes. Who have we witnessed to Think about it. at the well of life to get them to switch from a pot of damnation to a pot of everlasting life? And My God. My God. Think about it. You have nothing to draw from. Yes, I do. I draw from what he has done. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I draw from the prior healings. I draw from how he's made a way in the past. 
I draw strength for answer to prayer. Yeah. I draw strength for the healing I'm getting right now. Yes. Don't tell me you have nothing to draw from. Don't say you don't have no witness. We're alive today because we're drawing our next breath from Christ. Yes. We're drawing right now the peace that Come we on, need. Now. Come we're drawing right now the stamina yeah. that we need. Yeah. You want to tell somebody, it's not me that got my job. It was Christ that gave me the job. It's not God that gave me this movement. It's not man that gave me good relationship. It was God that gave it to me. And I got to remember all the days of my life. I will thank him. I will praise him. I will give him all the glory. I will give him all the praise. I will show my way. Because I'm telling you right now. Get my kids for the Lord on my side. But I'm so glad that somebody prayed for me. Somebody fasted for me. Somebody prayed and I might get right. God had sympathy. He showed me the fraud. Showed me salvation. And because we accepted him, we ought to go and tell us somebody else. Amen. Amen. We have no experience in Christ that you can draw from that will help somebody else know Christ. Yeah. The door of the church is open today. Somebody needs to give their life to Christ. I feel good in my spirit today. Yes, sir. You know why? Because as believers, we got the whole world to witness. They got something called multi-level marketing. Right. We all heard of it. In other words, you get somebody, and they get somebody, and they get somebody. Amen. And the Bible is called Operation Angel, where one disciple got another disciple. And that disciple got another disciple. Yes, sir. And the 12 apostles went out, they preached. And some got saved. They preached some more. And others got saved. Yes. The message is, that's what our message ought to be. We have enough to draw from to tell somebody else yes. about Christ. If you're online today or social media, you've never given your life to Christ. You know you ought to consider it today. I know it's Father's Day, but many in particular, we are believers of our homes. We are the ones that should guard the door. We are the ones who lead the family in prayer. We are the ones that set the tone for our worship. So on Father's Day, let's not just be a maternal father. Let's be a spiritual father. Let's take responsibility for our homes and our children. Let us be the leader. Let the father testify when I didn't have a job. God opened doors. Let the father testify I was sinking deep in sin. Far from a peaceful shore. Let the Father testify. It's not weeping to cry. It's not weep to say thank you, Jesus. It takes a strong man to cry tears of joy. And that's why I don't mind crying. Because it's tears of soul. And I've got a lot to share. Because God has done so much for me. You have a lot to share. God has done so much for you. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. So we praise and thank you. If you've never accepted Christ on this day, believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Thou shalt be saved on today night. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and thou shalt be saved. That right there, acknowledge, believe, and confess. Or to be something is right there on the screen. We can learn that. We can be a witness. As a believer, we should be able to point to somebody at least once in your salvific history. And the Lord led me to that person. And because of the word of God, I drew from my witness, my experience, and the word. And here they are today. I got Father God, we thank you right now for allowing us to come to this place. We pray, God, for the person that are listening by means of social media. We pray, God, that you can touch their heart. Let them know that they have a purpose. Let them know that they are released from the past. Let them know it doesn't matter what they have done. Your blood covers it all. Thank you for reminding us what you have done. We can draw from your past healing. We can draw from your past experience. And we can share with somebody else. So bless them today. God, if they don't have a church home, we pray that you lead them to a place where they can worship have given their life to you, oh God, we pray that you will show them until they say, what must I do to be saved? And finally, Father, they don't have a church.
church home. We pray that you would lead them to a place, hallelujah, where they can grow in your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you, people of God. Join with us our next session. Right here, faith of God. God is good all the time. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Come on, church, let your Lord hang.